in this new age of evolving architectures, events have always been consistent. We use events in one form or the other while processing messages. With multiple open source platforms, it's difficult to choose one over other. In this video, we are going to understand the trade-offs between RabbitMQ and Kafka, which can help us in choosing the right messaging platform within our event-driven architecture. Let's get started. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss any update from Tech Primers. The agenda goes like this. Initially, we will be looking at the features of RabbitMQ and comparing it with the features of Kafka. Then we will look at when can we use each of these platforms. I'll overlay this whole RabbitMQ versus Kafka with a simple case study. We'll be looking at an architecture diagram and we'll be overlaying that with RabbitMQ and Kafka's implementation with a microservices based architecture. Finally, we will look at the limitations and the challenges between these two platforms. So what is RabbitMQ? RabbitMQ is simply a pub sub kind of a platform where you can use it for point to point communication and you can leverage it for request response kind of a model. Before streaming platforms came into picture, there were only publish and subscriber kind of a model and ActiveMQ and RabbitMQ fell under that particular model. So RabbitMQ is one variation of the publisher subscriber model and you can leverage it for point to point communication as well. Kafka on the other hand leverages the same publish subscribe model. However, it's generally used for streaming platforms. But RabbitMQ deploys smart broker model where you can leverage your RabbitMQ to intelligently route traffic across different queues. Kafka on the other hand leverages the consumer to decide what kind of uh, intelligence you want to bake in. So the broker in itself doesn't take any rules or routing decisions on the type of messages you push into Kafka. RabbitMQ can be either asynchronous or synchronous. You can have acts for messages which are going to be delivered to the consumers and things like that. Kafka on the other hand is a streaming log, right? It's mostly durable and you can leverage it for replaying messages and you can completely rely on Kafka for pulling messages. RabbitMQ follows a push based approach where a producer pushes a message, it gets pushed onto a specific queue which is specific for that particular consumer. On the other hand, Kafka leverages pull based model where producers are pushing in or pumping in logs into the Kafka platform and the consumer's responsibility is to pull these messages whenever they are available for them. So you will have to constantly pull the Kafka broker for pulling these messages out of each partitions and topic. RabbitMQ helps us in prioritizing messages if there is a use case where you want to prioritize messages or events one above the other. In Kafka, you can obviously order messages, retain messages and you can get guarantee for messages compared to what RabbitMQ provides. The major reason why people go for Kafka is for retention of messages. RabbitMQ is just a plain point to point communication queue where you just push a message onto the queue. Once the consumer consumes the message, it gets deleted from the queue. On the other hand, from Kafka, you can keep a retention period and you can replay or reconsume the message from the broker again. Finally, RabbitMQ deploys decoupled consumer queues in the sense you can have two different events pushed onto a single queue based on the consumer pattern and you don't have to tell the producer on what you are consuming within your application. This could be an intelligent smart routing logic which you can add within the RabbitMQ broker in itself. On the other hand, for Kafka, you will have to plan well ahead in advance if you're creating multiple partitions based on the type of events which you're pushing onto your topic. So you will be having your consumer's logic coupled with the platform when you're creating these partitions or consumer groups. So what do I mean by this last sentence, right? Decoupling consumers and coupling consumers. So let me explain that with a simple diagrammatic flow. I have an application which is going to produce some events. I have two applications, application two and application three. These two are going to consume the events which application one publishes. I have two events which application one is going to publish. One is called event one, the other one is called event two. And application two is going to consume event one and two both but application three is going to consume only one type of event. Now, if I want to have this kind of a model where I have some specific set of events consumed by some specific set of consumers, that's when things become 
haywire. Let me overlay this with a RabbitMQ kind of an example. In case of RabbitMQ, you obviously create something called as consumer queues for each consumer. So when I create a consumer queue for application 2, I'll be configuring it to use event 1 and event 2 both for application 2. And for application 3, I'll be configuring it for having only events from the event 2. This way I can decouple my routing logic within the platform and I don't have to have these in the consumer end. In case of Kafka, we'll be having partitions. So let's call the event 1 as a partition 1 and event 2 as a partition 2, right? For example, this is where all my events which are having events of type event 1 will go into a separate partition and event 2 will go into a separate partition. Now the consuming application 2 will have to subscribe to both these partitions in order to retrieve messages for both these events. And application 3 has to like now consume from partition 2 in order to get only events 2. The other option is having a single partition where both these events are present and your application 3 will have to filter out events of type event 1 because it doesn't need to process those. So this is another option where you can leverage it. But if you want to go with the cross topic and cross consumption of event types, then you can definitely leverage joins in Kafka in order to do it. This is where I just explained about the decoupling and the coupling part. It gets complicated when you want to have events from different topics consumed in the same application in Kafka. However, in RabbitMQ, it's much simpler. With that, let's understand when to use RabbitMQ and when to use Kafka. If let's say you want to have a capability to replay your messages within your microservices architecture, then you should definitely think of moving towards Kafka because RabbitMQ doesn't provide an option to replay from the platform itself. You will have to leverage the producer to replay the message. Instead, if you use Kafka, you can pick a message and then replay from the broker directly. The other option is if you don't have any end-to-end -end picture of your architecture, you can definitely use RabbitMQ because you don't know how your architecture is going to evolve. If you look at the example which we just saw in the earlier slides where we did not know where application 2 and 3 were having different types of events. It is easier to configure RabbitMQ in that particular case so you don't have to change your Kafka architecture or your publisher architecture. That's when you will go for RabbitMQ. When you don't have sight of how many consumers are going to come in and what type of messages a consumer going to consume, then you can definitely use RabbitMQ. If you want to leverage streaming data and you want to process data in the form of streams, then you can definitely use Kafka for it. Like we saw earlier, when you don't want to change anything on your producer side for any customer addition, then you can definitely leverage RabbitMQ. If you want to have high throughput and you want to scale very quickly within your microservices architecture for processing huge number of messages, then you should definitely leverage Kafka for it. One advantage of RabbitMQ over Kafka is it is language agnostic and you can create multiple microservices within the ecosystem for communicating with different languages within your RabbitMQ platform. Kafka does provide majority of the APIs to be consumed from specific languages, but RabbitMQ provides more integrations than what Kafka provides. Let's understand the whole RabbitMQ versus Kafka battle with a small case study. I have taken this case study from the website Jack Van Lightly. So he has created a very good example and analogy using event-driven architectures by comparing queues with log. Basically queues are nothing but RabbitMQ and log is nothing but the event logs from Kafka. Imagine this is our architecture for the case study. There are four different microservices. One is called sales inventory. The other is called billing. There's one called fulfillment and there's one for notifications. These all communicate between each other and the order placed, order modified, order cancelled, these are all events. So sales sends three events to billing. These are three different events. It also sends events to fulfillment and also it sends notifications. Same way each of these microservices interact with each other in terms of events. Now let's convert this into a topic and queue kind of a strategy. Using RabbitMQ, let's say we split these messages or events into multiple event types. For example, these are the event types. From the previous example, we have just categorized saying there is order place, there is order modified, there is cancelled build, there is modification build, there is order refund and order ship. These are the different types of events which are going to be used across our microservices architecture. And that's what this particular slide signifies. So I have three different microservices which are consuming from these because the first one just publishes, right? 
so i have billing which is going to consume order placed order modified and cancelled notifications which are going to consume from order placed order refunded and shipped those are the notification which it needs to get and fulfillment needs five different events to be consumed now if i overlay this with a rabbit mq kind of a use case with q this is how i can create so all the green boxes are my microservices and all these are just the events the order dot are just the events and billing is nothing but a queue so i will be having a billing queue which consumes messages from these events only these three messages are pushed onto the billing queue from the sales inventory messages and out of all the three it's again if you look at it all the three are getting pushed into fulfillment as well and order placed alone is getting pushed into notifications as well so these three queues are created so that we can easily serve and move messages whatever we need for this particular microservice now building publishes these three types of messages and out of which two are pushed into the fulfillment queue and one is getting pushed into the notifications queue so all these are taken care at the broker level itself so that the microservice can easily consume these messages and then they can process them so if let's say your use case is to have something like this then definitely go for rabbit mq now let's look at kafka in kafka we have two different options the first option is having a single topic where all the types of orders are getting pushed for example sales also pushes into the order topic billing also pushes into the order topic fulfillment also pushes there notification also consumes from the same right so everybody consumes and publishes onto the same topic this is one kind of an option where users can consume and then just filter out messages based on the type of message they wanted the other option is to have three different topics one for orders which are coming in from the sales one for billing which is specific to the billing domain the other for just fulfillment right which is specific to the fulfillment of orders this is another option where you can use kafka and then create specific topics for your business domain and then just segregate the messages based on these domains so those are the two different ways in which you can create the same architecture with rabbit mq and kafka so it's up to you how you want to decide and what kind of architecture you want to choose based on these two different options which i just explained what do you think suits well for your use case do let me know in the comment section below i'm happy to discuss and brainstorm what kind of use cases you have finally let's look at some of the limitations between these two platforms rabbit mq queues are single threaded that means it can scale but only to a point when that particular single thread can scale to it has more complex configurations with more number of brokers added when you have multiple brokers within rabbit mq it gets more complicated when you have like five plus brokers there is no option for us to replay a message which is another big limitation with the rabbit mq platform also it doesn't support streaming right out of the box however you can definitely leverage different libraries in order to get streaming capabilities kafka on the other hand has storage overheads because it stores messages for a long period of time and it gets replicated to three different replicas for making it durable so you will have to think about storage cost when you want to move towards kafka it also has limitations for the streaming api which are specific to jvm languages like java however still there are a lot of open source libraries which are coming up so that you can leverage these streaming apis out of the box ordering in a kafka platform is restrictive to a partition so if you want to create ordering across events and across partitions you will have to definitely leverage joins but you cannot directly do that out of the box finally you will have to leverage the producer to coordinate for increasing the number of partitions based on the type of events and you cannot just take that kind of a decision without involving the producer in mind these are some of the limitations which we have in both these platforms i hope you were able to understand both rabbit mq and kafka and i presume you can now understand the trade offs between these two platforms and choose the right one for your architecture as always if you like the video go ahead and like it if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to it meet you again in the next video thank you very much